Hey, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate you guys appreciate it, taking some time out of your evening, uh, you know, to come out and be around uh, football and talk a little bit about football. Uh, my name is Eric Vanberg, and I've been a teacher and a coach here at Eastview for 20 years now. Um, overall, I think I'm 25 years being a teacher and a coach. I grew up in a small little town, well, it's not that small, a town in Iowa called uh, Fort Dodge, Iowa. <clears throat> and somewhere back in like the mid 1980s, I'm a little kid, I'm a short, chubby little kid. And I went out for baseball because that's what all my buddies were doing. And I think I, I set the record, I'm the, I'm the only kid in Fort Dodge history to strike out on the tee. <laughs> I couldn't hit the ball in my hand. Eye coordination was a little bad, wasn't very good at it. So I tried basketball, and I went to basketball, and I was there. I couldn't really jump that high. I wasn't even that fast. Um, but they let me play, and I wasn't picked very high when they ended up drafting teams. So uh, baseball and basketball were not really my thing, but football was. And I think this is, uh, you know, football was a place that I got to go, and I had value. You know, the other kids around me, I struck out on the tee and I couldn't play basketball very well, but I had value on the football field. And I still think back to those times, the coaches that I had, my teammates that I had. I had great coaches, great teammates. They encouraged me the whole time. They made it a passion for me and a love and playing football. It's become an anchor in my life. A number of other things have become anchors as well, but I still think back to my, the friends I made playing football in high school are still my friends today. The friends I made in college playing football are still my friends today. And it has, it has given my, and I'm so coachable, right? So it, tonight becomes a very personal thing for me. As I listened over the last number of years to people uh, ripping on the game that I love, and I sat and listened, and I, I feel like, hey, you know what, I understand that you have your right to your opinion, but somewhere along the line, a lot of us, and the coaches, are, a lot of them are here as well, we kind of felt like we need to be able to make our case as well. And I think uh, that, that's kind of where this started. I know myself and Coach Sherwin, Coach Pushner, talked a lot about this, and how do we want to how, how do we want to present this? We want to be able to get our feelings out there some way and let people know about the good things that are going on in football. So I started making some contacts. And I, number, and I talked to a number of folks, and uh, we have a number of them here tonight who are going to speak to you guys and maybe give a little bit of sense of, uh, of football and the dangers of football versus the benefits of football. And one of them is Dr. Francis Shen. He is the head of the Shen Neural Law Center at the University of uh, Minnesota. He's a professor of law, and uh, he spoke to the football coaches two years ago, and I was in the audience. And I listened to what he said, and I thought, man, this is a message that we need to get out as well. He has graciously shown up here tonight, even though I believe his flight leaves in about an hour and a half to two hours, right? Or right. somewhere there. So <laughs> he has agreed to come out here, wants to speak at the beginning. Once he's done, he's going to take off and uh, head up to the airport. But Dr. Shen, thank you for coming out tonight. If you can't hear me, let me know. But I think we can, we can go without the mic. So um, I was going to talk for about seven minutes. Uh, and then again, maybe answer a couple questions. I do apologize. I have to have to run to the airport, but uh, I want to say at the outset that if you've got follow-up questions, let me know. I'm not going to go through a, um, a long presentation, but I, I teach an entire semester course on sports concussions in the law. I've led the last two and a half years uh, with the sport. I want to acknowledge at the University of Minnesota a grand challenge grant with a group of um, six at the University of Minnesota and then partners across the state, uh, Mayo Clinic, uh, Centric Air, um, in the middle of the state, a number of partners, a uh, study of uh, youth sports concussions with a particular emphasis on football. So I've got a lot more to say, but I'm just going to give you a couple highlights. But if you say, well, you know, I wanted to know more about this or that, um, Coach has my, my uh, information, I'm happy to follow up. So I just want to talk about, I'll say a little bit of my intro and then three things. Um, risk, benefit, and, and weighing the, the risk and benefit. But before we get to that, let me just introduce myself as Coach did. I'm not from Minnesota, my wife, uh, I've got two kids, and we all moved here in 2012 to take positions at the University of Minnesota. Uh, I teach in the law school, I'm a member of the graduate program in neuroscience, and my whole world is thinking about what do we learn about the brain and how do we make better policy and law? And that might be you know, Alzheimer's in the brain or addiction, 
and it certainly could be brain injury uh, and the law. And I'll give you a way to punchline at the beginning. Some think that based on what we've learned about the brain and the effect of sports, in particular football on the brain, what we should do is eliminate football altogether. And that's not um, an extreme position, actually. I mean, to me, I think it's not extreme. But there are many who take that, that view. Uh, and one of the, the, the things that I'm going to emphasize here is that I think what we've learned about the brain encourages us to rethink some of the things that we do in sports. And by the way, that's already happening, led by USA Football and adopted by uh, the state of Minnesota, Minnesota State High School League, uh, Minnesota Youth Athletic Services, and others. Um, but it doesn't go so far as to say, Let's eliminate it all together. That's what I do, spend my time doing. I was born and raised in St. Louis, uh, Missouri. Went to uh, school, did play football there, though. Not after my freshman year, ended up doing other, other sports. My brother played all the way through. My father at home, uh, got love him, still puts in the VHS tape and watches when my brother came off the end and blocked uh, an extra point uh, attempt that helped uh, take our team from districts into, into sectionals. Um, as my brother said, he's never had that many. He's not a physician and scientist, by the way. An oncologist recruited to MD Anderson, uh, top cancer center in the nation. Uh, he said, you know, never again have I had 5,000 people uh, going that wild. Well. Just, just an amazing experience uh, that's meant a lot for our family. So uh, that's a little personal background. Uh, let me talk about the risk. Uh, one of the papers that we published last year um, summarized about 100 studies and was called How Dangerous Are View Sports uh, for the Brain? And uh, let me give you the, the bottom line on football. And there really, I think, two parts to it. One, Football, as a contact collision sport, is more dangerous for the brain than some other sports, like cross country. Okay. So, so it's not the case that there's no risk. However, football is not necessarily far and away the most dangerous sport. Some other sports, we have this little uh, quiz that we give when we're out like, at the state fair. Uh, and maybe in this room you know it, but female, women's, girls, soccer actually has a very high concussion rate, as do some others. So football's not alone. And really the question is, well, how dangerous is it? And here I want to talk to you about um, something called the availability bias. I'm like, what is that? I'll tell you what it is. What do you know about crime? I live in Dinkytown, actually very close to Dinkytown. Dinkytown is right next to the University of Minnesota. And uh, in the admissions office, one of the questions they deal with, and I have a daughter too, and I probably ask it too, is, you know, just like, tell me about the safety here around campus. Almost the only thing everyone knows about, it, unless you live right there, about safety is what you see in the headlines. What's available to you? And guess what? No one ever reports tons of students had a wonderful party, came home absolutely safe. Right? They would have to do that every day. They'd have to fill their entire papers. And so one of the things that begins to happen is that you see only a couple of headlines, the extreme ones. You think, man, anyone who lives near the University of Minnesota is going to get mugged. I'm, and would that now is the case, that I'm going to say this in a second, the crime rate's a little higher there. And you don't do things exactly the same as you might do uh, here, like at 2 a.m. you better lock your car, right? And probably you don't want to be out by yourself at 2 a.m. So you do things a little bit different, but do you take it to the extreme and say, we're not even going to send anyone ever to the University of Minnesota, right? Or we're never going to go to TCF Bank Stadium because anything close to, the, no, of course not, right? The availability bias. And that's one of the big challenges with football. The only headlines you will see about concussions in football, I guarantee you, we've done a little study, are negative stories. So did you know that the link between, if you, if you said, well, I wonder what the link is between suicide and playing professional football, you would probably think that those who play professional football are more likely to commit suicide than those who aren't. The best epidemiological study, studies, however, when they compare those who play in the NFL alongside comparable cohorts to those who have not, suggest that in fact the suicide rate is lower. Now, we don't know exactly why. There could be you know, a, lot of, a lot of different reasons. But the point is simply that you've got to kind of take a, a, a deep breath when you see some of these, these headlines. So the uh, last thing I want to say just about the risk is um, the, uh, the estimates are typically um, uh, done in what are called, uh, you know, how many opportunities do you have to get, uh, get a concussion? Um, and in a typical, let's say, uh, you, know, you need to get a playing practice, or you can get it, um, get it in the game. Uh, and we have a little uh, quiz where we ask people to estimate, and I won't go through it all. Uh, we say, you know, there are 10 teams in the football league, 25 players on the team. They play this. It sounds like an SAT question, but it's not. Uh, and the bottom line is that um, this type of uh, youth football program might expect, you know, five concussions over a season, which again isn't zero, some risk, but also isn't, as many of our respondents guess, 100 
500. We have some respondents saying every single player who puts on the pad is going to get a concussion. Right? It's just simply not, not the case. The evidence suggests that the vast majority of those who play football or any other sport, frankly, are not going to receive a concussion, and the vast majority of those who do receive a concussion will recover on their own within two or maybe three weeks. Which isn't, again, to say there isn't risk, but is to say that the risk that's portrayed in the headlines simply doesn't line up to um, what the data, the data suggests. And again, I can, we have a question to talk about it more. So that's the first thing on the list. There's some, it's not as bad as the headlines say, does vary a lot uh, sport to sport. All right, so what about the benefits? Well, point number one is on the risk, there's some risk. What about the benefits? This is um, a point of emphasis now uh, in the work that we're doing because it became evident as we were going through this research that there's virtually no conversation about the benefits. For those who participate in football, coaches, staff, athletes especially, they will tell you about the benefits, but again, all you see on the headlines and actually in the academic research, the published research is all on, what are the risks? What are the risks? What are the risks? Well, what are the benefits? We've been collecting these studies as well. Now, these studies are a little tougher because, you know, if you are a pure scientist, you take a group and you randomly assign some to play football and randomly assign some not, and you let them live their whole lives, and then you compare them and see, well, what was the difference? Well, you can't do that. Um, but you can do a number of different things. And I'll just mention two uh, points that are worth noting. One is that um, my colleague, Dr. Samadani, uh, who I think some of the material might have mentioned, she's uh, at Tempe County Medical Center, actually head over center care neurosurgeon, loves citing a study uh, based on a cohort from Wisconsin, high school football cohort, and they were able to compare the guys who played football with a group of those who didn't. And the health benefits of football turned out to be quite a lot. They lived a little bit longer, they had a little bit healthier lives from on the uh, heart uh, and um, a few other indicators that actually more healthy. And it's one study, um, but at least there's some suggestion there. I actually want to focus on the sort of um, the, the more qualitative benefits of football. Uh, and there, I'll mention two things. One is that we started to collect these uh, anecdotes, but they're, they're numerous. Um, and if you think about it, I think it makes sense. Football, between you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, up through twelfth grade, uh, is one of the most uh, unique opportunities for young men to find community. There is no other sport like football where you can put the big burly guys with the fast guys, with the quarterback guys, all on the same thing. And where everyone has to contribute, or else you don't just lose. But if the line misses a block, somebody gets hurt, or gets potentially hurt, or it gets knocked down. It's an essential part of the game. And if you ask the players, they will tell you, in the studies that have been done, just how important that is for them, how much bonding happens, right? Uh, another benefit, of course, are all the, uh, the physical benefits, the heart benefits, the brain benefits, when you study the brain, the confidence, the, um, the, the teamwork, um, uh, uh, you know, these sort of passion, these sorts of things are, are real, they can be measured, it's tough to measure them, uh, and you know, I can send you some of the studies that have tried to do it, uh, but they're there. So there are real benefits, they're not mentioned uh, in the headlines, they're tough to capture kind of scientifically, uh, but I would encourage you to ask those who play, and to listen for the consistent message, and I think you will consistently hear um, about these, these really, um, Really core, core benefits. One last point of data that's kind of interesting. We have more time, I'll show you the slides from it. As you know, there's no professional women's football. But there was, there have been a few experiments, uh, and there's one league in California about 10 years ago. There might be the league continues, but there was one study of a league 10 years ago. And they asked the women who play, they said, um, and one of the questions was, do you think that this uh, physical contact with the football mattered to you? And uniformly, the answer was yes. They talked about how it was liberating to be able to use their bodies in this way. They felt how the actual, the, um, the experience gave them, a, a, again, that team, a team bonding, they experienced in no other sport. These are all athletes playing a lot of different sports, right? There is something unique uh, and special, I think, about the sport of football. Uh, and if you kind of open your ears and, and begin to listen to it, uh, you begin to see it. I'm sure you're going to hear more about it. About it. All right, so my suggestion to you is that there are risks. Don't walk out and think, I heard this guy say it's, there's no risk of football. Not at all. There are risks. But I suggest to you that they're not the risk exactly as you're portrayed in the headlines. Two, you don't hear about them in the headlines, but there are benefits. There are real tangible benefits, and you can go find out about them yourselves by asking those who play. And asking those who have played, and asking about how it affected their lives and continues to be a part of their lives. 
All right, so risk and benefits, so what's the last part? Well, how do you kind of put that stuff together? Or what questions will I ask when my kids get, um, some of your kids, if my kids are five and seven? Well, the risk and benefits aren't a given, and they vary a lot team to team. So the risk could be greater if the coaches in your program don't, for instance, understand the Minnesota State, uh, the Minnesota State law on sports concussions. I spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, they could be reduced if your coaches are doing the things uh, that they should be doing. I mean, we were just talking before um, that you know, it used to be the case not all that long ago, maybe a generation before mine, where it was seen as stronger and more manly not to have water for your athletes. If you could make it through a practice without water, that was a sign of strength. I think that's true. I don't think the medical evidence suggests that at all. If you look at professional leagues, I mean, they've got this, we've invented Gatorade and all these other drinks to try and improve fluid. And same thing with the type and the nature of the drills that are being run. You can ask about that. Right? So risks aren't a given. And I would encourage you to learn more about the particular program. And say, you know, how do you address this? And what are you doing? And I think we get certain that this school and many others really good answers for that. By the way, USA Football as a, as a program is introducing uh, a gradation so that they don't just start at, you know, age eight, bang and heads, but they learn the skills. And then introduce much like hockey, you introduce the checking later and so forth. So that's one of the risks. Then the benefits, again, look at the program and talk to the coaches and experience the program and see what's happening. I mean, the, the, really the, the proof is in, uh, in the experience of the young men uh, who participate, middle school uh, and high school, and the alumni who get through and come back. And I know there are some of the athletes here and they're, they're going to be talking to me and interact with them. Um, I'll just close with an anecdote. I mentioned uh, in my high school, single search in high school, um, and, I, and I think it, uh, great, it's great you're doing this program. We used to have a C team for freshmen, a B team, and then the varsity. Uh, and I remember the C team. I mean, it was a great day when I made the team. We had all these people try out. There were tryouts. Um, it, was, it, was, you know, it was a big deal. I learned last year, I was back at the school, that they had so few football uh, kids coming out now, they had to consolidate the B and C team. There was no longer tryouts. Basically, you show up. Uh, and, and you're there. Um, and I think that's real tragedy. Uh, because uh, although I played only one year, my brother played four, um, I know for my cohort, uh, it was a really important thing. Uh, and then the sports I went on to play were tremendously important uh, to me. Um, and I'm in the majority in the sense that no concussions, um, you know, no, no long term negative effects, only positive effects. Um, you can't take my word for it. You should look at the data. Um, uh, it's not risk-free, uh, but nothing is. The benefits are there, uh, and I hope that you'll consider, um, you know, engaging with your coaches here and thinking it through as you make your individual decisions. I don't know. I think I went a little longer than I did, so I, you may want to move on. I don't know if I'm to take questions or keep going. What do you think? That's all right. Yeah, we will. But, hey, we'd like to thank you from Eastview Football for coming out tonight. We'd like to present you, and I know you're a track guy, so awesome. we've got a T-shirt for you here, an Eastview Lightning T-shirt. So thank you okay, very thanks, much. Okay, thanks, Coach. Yeah. again was trying to react to this uh, a little bit as well and uh, they put together a video it's only about four minutes long but we'd like to kind of put it on now because I think it's it's pretty important you'll see some probably some people that you know on here um, and I think it has a great message so we'll play this where to begin on how football has impacted my life it really is the ultimate team game. There's something really special that you get out of football that you really can't get anywhere else. I think you find uh, student athletes that are selfish. They will give themselves to the team uh, for the benefit of the team before themselves. Friday Night Lights is a community event. Playing on Friday nights and, and the magic of that experience and you never want to let like go of that. When we have a Friday night football game, the entire town comes out. When we go on the road, our town travels with us. I think that, that really helps our kids feel like they're part of something really special. And football is the fabric uh, of life. Football teaches us so many life lessons. It teaches you what work ethic is. How to stick with things, how to overcome adversity. Dedication to the sport, dedication to the team. Uh, you learn what loyalty is. Is, is, uh, and what sacrifice is. You know, I, I, I learned the virtues of, of hard work and, and delayed gratification and uh, being humble and, and sacrificing and, and, and all those things that transcend, transcend the football field. It's the resiliency 
It's the resolve. It's the never giving up, never quitting. We call it rogue vote. It's, uh, it's, it's one of the greatest teaching sports you can actually have. You know, school is great, and it's a first and foremost focus for our kids. They need to know math, they need to know biology, but we have a hard time teaching teamwork. In many of the other activities, anyone can score on the team. Football, we all have to pull together, see that one can score. In one team meeting, one of the players was complaining because he was not getting enough balls thrown his way. But you learn how to work together as a group and how you have to sacrifice so somebody else might look good. And it took so many people, 11 people on one side of the ball, all working together, together to actually get something done. This is the greatest team game ever. You can just see the kids' confidence building and all of a sudden they begin to believe in each other. Any competitive game is ultimately all about relationships. We teach our kids to care about one another first. I want the kids to understand their toughest opponent is themselves. I don't know if deep down I thought I could do it. I realized that, you know, I can do a lot more than I think I can do. You know, that I was, that I was selling myself short. But let us not forget the memories. Because often the, the memories, it's very rarely about the winning and the losing. It's about holding hands together at the top of the hill. I look back on my high school football career and it was the best memories that I had of high school. There is a goal that we have in Watan, and it would be to make sure that the best memories the kids have of their high school experience is playing football. And when we get together, it's funny, we don't really talk about the games and all the things that happen in the locker room and, and the bus rides and the trip there and the camaraderie we've built over the years. You know, it's amazing, you know, the, the young men that you get to impact and, and be a part of their lives and 10, 15 years later, having those players coming up to you and hugging you and, and you know you were a part of uh, something pretty special. But high school, it's the purest form of football you can have. And uh, I always say when I come back in my next life, I'm gonna be a high school football coach. What really I enjoyed the most is I had an opportunity as a parent to go sit in the stands and enjoy watching my son play. I'm a retired high school football coach and small college coach. Head football coach, Concordia College, Moorhead, Minnesota. Head football coach at Minnetonka High School. Retired coach and educator. Creighton Dare Hall High School, Harvard University, Minnesota Vikings, Baltimore Ravens. I am a keeper of the game. And I am a keeper of the game. I am a keeper of the game. The head football coach at the University of Minnesota, home of the Golden Gophers. And I am a keeper of the game. And I'm a keeper of the game. I am a keeper of the game. I'm the general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm also a keeper of the game. One of the things I think you heard over and over there again is, is the memories. And uh, as I talked to the kids at Eastview High School, this group that just got done uh, having their season, one of the things that they have over and over, the thing they remember is singing Country Roads by Don Denver in the locker room and on the bus and some of those things that, that take place and that can only really happen uh, in, in a football locker room sometimes. And, and those are the memories that they keep. The other one that they mentioned was uh, the night that we won the section championship. And we win the section championship over at East Ridge High School. Everybody is celebrating. Everybody's having a great time. And I was celebrating as well. And unfortunately for me, I jumped up and I landed. And I went to the ground. I had severed my patella tendon. And it was a difficult time. But that's where I met our next speaker. Dr. Randall Lewis is a, uh, is a, is a orthopedic surgeon at TCO. And he and I spent some time together, and he repaired my patellar tendon, and it's, it's ready to go again. But we also got a chance to talk a little bit. And it turns out he's from a, a sports background as well, and as we talked, I said, hey, how would you like to come out and talk to some, some parents and some kids about the value of football? And, and lucky enough, he did. So thank you very much for coming out. And So uh, I just want to share my perspective on football from a uh, medical uh, uh, avenue, but also as a parent and as a player myself and the kids involved. So I uh, uh, just wanted to 
share my thoughts. I mean, I, as guys, I know many of us feel like the most powerful memories from our high school are linked to sports. And you know, for me, it's football. Uh, you know, you go to a reunion or a get together, and guys are always huddled around sharing stories about the great time that they had, uh, successes, failures, teamwork. Um, you know, the benefits of high school football are in several arenas, and there's academic, there's physical, and there's psychological. I just want to touch on each one of those. You know, the physical component is real. I mean, from training two days, you guys, a lot of you guys know that, to deep into the playoffs where it's almost winter time, and you're putting a lot of effort to get fit and strong, and that carries through to your confidence and your overall health, and that has consequences later in life as well to build those patterns. Uh, although injury is possible, the statistics show right now that football's uh, safer than it's ever been. Uh, catastrophic injury is relatively rare, and that's due to coaching, it's due to technique, it's due to better equipment. In terms of actual injury risk, there's a, there's a big study called the Piper Study out of Colorado, and it showed uh, basically a 1 in 500 chance of injury uh, in practice and a 1 in 100 chance of injury in game. And those rates are only slightly higher than other sports. And we all hear about how terrible football is, and that's the whole gist of getting this thing together is to try to reverse that message. You know, in addition to all the positives, the risk is uh, probably a overstated. Uh, it's certainly less risk than things like skiing or skateboarding, trampoline use, you know, <laughs> skating, uh, and very close to sports like lacrosse, wrestling, and hockey. Uh, Dr. Shen went over the concussion thing, so I'll pass through that. As a surgeon, I, I see you know, fractures, sprains, uh, contusions, things that uh, you know, may scare parents or kids and maybe not so much coaches, but you know, those things heal quickly in, in uh, adolescent populations. And of all of these injuries, only 10% require surgery. You know, most kids uh, rehab, it takes some time out of their life, but a lot of them end up coming out of the pipeline as good as before and back to playing sports. So even in the small subset that do get serious injuries, you know, there's a lot of modern technology to get them through and have them keep going. Football gives kids more strength and stamina. I think with that, a lot of self-confidence grows uh, and health for the future. I think the other thing is the benefits of football go well beyond the body. And I, I looked, I did a fair amount of research to look at different studies that showed how um, you know, the diligence and effort uh, that's on the football field translates to academic success. Uh, the uh, uh, CDC, uh, Center of Disease Control, had 43 studies that showed uh, a linkage between physical activity and sports and academic success. Uh, some other studies here, higher grades in math and science, better graduation rates, higher AP class registration, future, future success in terms of higher starting salaries that uh, continue through a lifetime, higher levels of philanthropy. Uh, interesting Harvard study that linked uh, physical activity and brain development, and particularly the parts of the brain that's for self-control and learning. Uh, you know, very important for kids these days. A favorite quote of mine. Uh, he said, "Day by day, you know, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is what you become." So, you know, it, it sounds like something about football to me because if you're going through practices, uh, putting through physical effort, uh, sacrificing for your team, you know, those things that in turn develop your own character, and that stays with you for a lifetime. So, you know, we all know that we're kind of in a fierce daily battle for the souls of our kids. I've got two sons that finished, uh, recently finished high school, and, you know, our competition uh, is basically instant gratification. That's in our culture. Uh, it permeates society. There's isolation, self-doubt. You, know, you see that in teenagers all the time. It's a high percentage of worry. You know, social media, too, it really uh, uh, pulls individuals away by trying to keep up with everybody else. And, always being on their phone, and we really want to try to steer people away from that. Uh, so, <coughs> you know, I stole this from Gary Larson on the far side, I modernized it a little bit, but you know, we as parents, you know, we see what modern kids are doing most of the time, we just, we know it probably doesn't translate to success in the future, so we really want to shift people away from that. You know, I think we're in a society, basically, that uh, 
gets what we want when we want it. And I, I'm no different, we're all no different as parents. You know, we basically, you know, we don't want to stand in line at Starbucks, we don't want to stand in line at the grocery store. You know, sports and football really teach deferred gratification, you know, which is hard to find anywhere in society today. You know, practice is a grind. Uh, memorizing a playbook, conditioning, putting time in the weight room. We all know this is, takes a, a, a big uh, toll on people in terms of their spare time and their effort, but it pays off. These are lessons that uh, are learned for life because the successful people in medicine, on uh, business, and teaching and coaching as parents you know, are usually the people that can do the hard things early and reap a bigger benefit later on. You know, football, I think, is a metaphor for life in that way. You know, we all know how difficult the teenage years are. Uh, up to 40% of teens uh, feel isolation and depression. Uh, being part of a team gives kids basically a place to be and a place to, some place to be a part of as well. Self-sacrifice and deferring gratification within a group really gives kids a sense of confidence and unity. You know, again, I think football is a metaphor for life, the same thing. Finally, we all know uh, that we're in a time of self-promotion, the look at me generation. You know, if you ever grab your kids' phones and see what they're doing, they're always posting Instagram stories, Snap stories about what they do, and even our, ourselves. I mean, we're always on Facebook uh, showing the world what we do and how unique and special we are as individuals. And we're all happy to say what we bought, where we've been, who we're doing it with. Uh, a lot of data out there shows that that leads to depression in adults and definitely in kids. Uh, you know, much of our calling is to be something bigger than ourselves, uh, you know, make personal sacrifices for something that's more important you know, for others and for our team. You know, I'll leave it to you individually based on your faith and your personal philosophy to say, you know, what is your team? Uh, but um, you know, that said, there are very few places in the modern world that teach us how to be something, uh, something part of something bigger, uh, part of a team, and football definitely does that. You know, on the field, every player's got what they are uh, asked to do what they need to do. They need to take out a block, break up the wedge. Uh, they need to, need to you know, take out some linemen. Everybody has a, their role. Uh, and if everyone does their role, puts in personal sacrifice, bigger game, be part of the team. So I think this attitude uh, builds society, builds family, builds faith. I think that's where the real gains of football are. So to me, at least, football is symbolic of a lot that's really good in life. Yeah, there's physical things, there are academic things, but to me it's the character things that really make a difference. Thanks a lot. Dr. Lewis, we'd like to present you with a nice few yeah. t-shirt as well. I know it'd be great. He's on our sideline most of the time anyway as our, as our team doctor. So. It'll be nice for him to have a t-shirt to wear. Thank you very much. Hey, our last speaker of the night is going to be our head football coach, Kelly Sherwin. Uh, 20 years ago, I was fortunate enough to be hired by Coach Sherwin uh, to be a coach here at Eastview, and uh, I, I have never regretted it. It's been, it's been fantastic, so we'll let him. Hey, first of all, a special thank you to Vandy and Coach Pushner for kind of putting this event together. As Vandy said, we've never done this before and hope it will be something that we do more and more um, as, as we go through the future. Um, I had the opportunity to speak to our leadership group. We meet on Fridays at 6.30 a.m. during May. And I, I honestly had this hope for a couple of years mainly because we've got such good coaches, and, and I, I seem to get to, to speak less and less, and it, it was very helpful for me because I, I think everyone's talked about the memories, and I started to relive some of the experiences that I've had through football. And here's kind of me. I started in second grade. In second grade, I got my first helmet and shoulder pads. I was Roger Staubach of the Dallas Cowboys, and I had seven other buddies, and they were all a different NFL team. And we spent our days all year long playing what we called in the day, kill the quarterback. One guy would get the ball and run around and everyone else would chase him and tackle him. And once you got tackled, you gave the ball to someone else. For three years, that was my life. I remember in second grade, I had to go to the principal's office because my buddies were coming home and instead of going to, we had open campus, a small town in Montana, instead of going home to lunch, we'd go to my front yard and play football. And someone drove by and saw us 
and we got in trouble. So three years, I played Roger. I was Roger Staubach of the of the Dallas Cowboys. Then I went into 13 years of organized football. In fifth and sixth grade, I played flag football. Seventh grade, I was going to get to play tackle football, but I was practicing for punt, pass, and kick. I slipped and fell and broke my arm. So I did get to play my seventh grade year. I played eighth grade, and then I played four years of high school. I went on and I played at Montana State University five years because I registered in one year. So that kind of takes me through 13 years of organized football. And then since then, I've been, this next year will be my 32nd year coaching the game. So I don't know what that adds up to 47. Next year will be my 48th year of somehow being involved in football. And I'm biased. I am biased towards the game. So you can say whatever you want, read those studies, whatever it is. And all of my observations are based on my personal experience. I'm not going to talk about medical things or anything like that. I, I think I understand. I, I've gotten two concussions in my life. I played... I don't know, 13 years of football. One was I was six years old and we were running around in my grandma's house and she had one of those really heavy uh, pictures of the Last Supper. And I went and I ran into her house and I was going to hide behind the wall and I hit the wall and that thing fell on my head. So there was my first concussion, nothing to do with football. My second one, I think I was 12, 13 years old. My parent, where my older brother and my dad were changing the storm windows up in the second floor. And we kind of had a little little room, and they dropped the window and it hit the, hit the ceiling below it, and it bounced and hit me in the head. And there's my two concussions that I've gotten in my life. And I, I've been fortunate that all my years of football, I don't know that I, I got hit a lot, but I never had to experience a concussion. Um, I grew up in this small town up here, I don't know, it's up there at the top, if you see Alberta, Cut Bank, that's where I went to school. And I told the players, you know, I've seen every, every part of the sport, I was a four sport athlete growing up, so I played basketball, I played baseball, I ran track and field, and then I played football. All through my high school, all growing up, I did those things. Um, and football was my love, and I learned so much in the game, but Cut Bank, small town, I, I, had, I told the kids, you know, I've experienced being the superstar. I was able to be on teams and be the superstar, and I was on teams where I told them, I went from All-State High School, the next year I show up at Montana State University, and I'm rated number eight on the depth chart. And the, all these things about quarterbacks not getting hit, that isn't true when you're eighth on the depth chart. So I've seen it from all different, different angles. And my conclusion is, High school football is different than any other thing that I've ever experienced. And I think Dr. Shannon and Dr. Lewis both, both talk about it. The diversity is absolutely unbelievable. And I just think in my coaching career, we've got players that are 6'6", six, six, 300 pounds on the field at the same time that there's a kid that's maybe 5'8", 125. And they're both just as important. And they're vital to the team's success. Coach Walsh, I will tell you, we played in a state playoff game. 38 different kids stepped on the field and played a special team. What other sport does that happen in? When is the last time you've been to a basketball game where 38 different kids got to step on the field in front of 5,000 people when it mattered? It doesn't happen. There is not another sport that provides that opportunity and all those chances for kids to be part. And it doesn't have to be the starter, and I think that's the one thing we sell in our program. Everyone matters. That's why we don't cut. We want as many kids on the team as we can that are going to experience those things. I think the diversity is unbelievable in the sport of football and team. It, to me, it's the greatest team game ever. And I think the older you get, the more it becomes a team game. We've all, I've been to fourth grade football, and the smartest or the fastest kid, that team can win. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen once you start getting to high school. It becomes more and more of a team. And every single person on that field matters. One guy makes a mistake, doesn't matter if you've got the greatest quarterback, the greatest running back, whatever it is, everybody's got to participate. 
And it includes those 38 guys, those 38 guys that maybe their one job is to run down and, and tackle someone on special teams. We can show you a film of games last year where that one play made a difference in our team's success. You know, you, you know how it is. Five or six plays a game really have an impact. So I think football is absolutely a special game. And there are not other sports, I can't think of another sport, when you talk diversity in team, that have what football has to offer. As I sat down and one of the things I wanted to talk to the kids about, I think the, foot, the game of football gives and it teaches. And that has been my experience for the 47 years that I've been in. And this is my list, and I started talking about it and writing things down. Things that have been important to me in my life that maybe I didn't get in basketball or baseball. Maybe I wasn't taught at home some of those things or had that experience. And the list goes on. The humbling of the game, the memories you can see. What it is to be a teammate. How important culture is. Oh my gosh, in this day and age, is culture important? Do we want our kids to be in part of a culture, culture that's going to edify them? Or are we going to leave it up to the video game and all those opportunities? And it keep delaying gratification, how to be a role. I, mean, I can't, I just, it makes me sick to my stomach to see the kid that he's in a sport and he doesn't make the team that he wants to be on and his first reaction is to quit. I've invested all this in here. I'm going to be this guy. I didn't get chosen for that spot. I'm going to quit. I'm not even going to participate in that game anymore. Oh my gosh. That just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. That they, that's, their, that's their whole life. And I just think the role and the team and all those things. Living beyond yourself. Whatever it is. And my list goes on and on and on. And these are things that I think that I have learned and been able to maybe teach to other people how to get out of your comfort zone, how to finish, just how to finish, whether it's finish a drill, finish a day of practice, finish a block, finish the test, finish your school day, finish a rep in the weight room. Oh my gosh, all those types of things. Winning matters. Yeah, we'll tell you right now, winning matters at Eastview. You better believe it. Winning matters, and we're going to talk about winning because that's what life is. We want our kids to win. Do we always win? No. But we're going to talk about it. Winning the right way. How to depend on other people. Prepare. Communicate. I just, it goes on. I just, the last two are some poems. I, I had the opportunity to listen to Gene Stallings, who at one time was the head football coach at Alabama. Alabama. And he got up and he recited word for word, If by Rudyard Kipling. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. 300 football coaches in there. And he talked about what that poem meant to him. Amazing, amazing. How to follow. Oh my gosh, we talk about leadership all the time, but we also got to learn how to follow. And I just think about my life as a parent and a husband. And some of the things that hopefully I can give, give from football into the rest parts of my life. So that's just my little list. And I think we've got, we can't forget high school football in the NFL. I, don't, I hate to compare them. You know, the headlines are about the NFL and CTE and all, and that's not high school football. High school football is different. It's football in its purest, purest form. It's not a business. It's not a business. We are here to educate. We want to educate the young people we have in our program. And we want to give them something that they can apply to the rest of their life. What about ECU? I don't know if you know this, but the coaches that coach here are professional educators. Our job and our profession is to teach if I want to go to a doctor, I'm going to go to someone that's trained as a doctor, right? I'm not going to go to someone off the street. And I'm just telling you, the men that I have the privilege to work with are absolutely outstanding. On our staff alone, we have 335 years. I learned tonight, Coach Roundtree, I sold him short. He's got 40 years of experience himself. 
So that should say 340 years of teaching experience and working with young people. We have multiple head coaches in our program. Multiple head coaches of other sports that coach football at ECU. And we're all different personalities. When I sat down in 1997 and was given the opportunity to hopefully create a staff, it was very important. We, I wanted to get social studies teachers, phi ed teachers, people maybe in the special ed department, English department, to be as diverse as we can because that's what the sport of football is, diverse. And we all have different personalities. And I think that's huge. So many, there are so many negatives with youth sports and so many of them revolve around the one personality, right? A kid has a bad experience because of the one personality, the one head adult that's in charge. And the other adults become judgmental and it falls apart. We think in our staff that doesn't happen because of the experience we have working with young people. And I believe in these men till the day I die. To the day I die. And I think if you give your kid an opportunity, they're going to have a great experience overall. Are we going to be perfect? No way. There might be a coach that's really dumb and calls the wrong play on second and two from the five-yard line versus Eden Prairie, and it might cost us a chance to win that game. And that might be me. Yep. Did it. Made a mistake. Could have done a lot of different things. To this day, I can defend you and tell you why I did what I did, but it was a mistake. And in the end, I've got to own up to that. And my lifetime of experience helped me get out of bed the next day. Helped me get out of bed the next day. We're going to make mistakes. You better believe it. But I tell you what, with 335 years of experience, it's not one person. It's never going to be one person that is going to have the impact on your kid. That's why every week a different coach sends the message. Every day a different coach ends practice. Every single day. We're going to flood the kids in our program with as many life lessons as we can. Every coach that's ever coached in this program, they've had to sign this coach's commitment. And the first four things are on this slide, and it doesn't talk at all about being a football coach. It's all about the type of person you are. And I've told, told all of them, hey, I don't care what you know about football. If you're this person, we're going to be successful. We are going to be successful. Mission B, do we all know where we're going? We better know where we're going. Are you going to educate? Are you going to educate in the good times? Or are you going to educate in the bad times? Are you going to be an educator? People don't come into my classroom and talk to me about football. It doesn't happen. Because they know I'm there to teach. And I think we've got a group of teachers that are like that. Am I going to be an ambassador to the program? When I'm in a community setting like this, am I going to be an ambassador? And let people know, am I going to be a role model for the student athletes? Because at the end of the day, we hope this is what the kids leave our program. This is the type of people we want our kids to leave. Do they know where they're going? Are they going to teach someone else some of the values that they learned? Are they going to be an ambassador in the community? Are they going to be a role model to that second or third grader that's coming through? We want them to be that same type of person. And then I think if we get that type of person, these things will happen. These are things that are important to us. Am I going to get smarter? Am I going to learn how not to make that mistake on second and two? on the five yard line against Eden Prairie with a minute and eight seconds left? Am I gonna be prepared, organized, communicate? Am I gonna be positive, corrective, positive with everything I see in our program? Am I gonna have enthusiasm and passion? Am I gonna be detail oriented? I think if we take care of the slide before, these things fall in place. And that's kind of where we're coming at as a, as a coaching staff. And if you know any of the men, you kind of get it. This is the final statement. I understand the above statements determine the expectations of all members of the Lightning football staff. I understand that my position on the staff neither elevates me above other staff members nor places me below my colleagues. 
I understand that all coaches on the staff play a different yet equal and vital role in the development of the program. I commit to work to meet the expectations of the Lightning football staff. I think if you take out the word coach and put in player, that's what you want. That's what you want. Someone that's going to be part of a team and accept their role. They're no better than anyone, and they're no lower than anybody. We're all equal, and we're all headed the right way, in the same direction. And I think that's what a team is. These were our current seniors when they were in eighth graders. They played each other in the playoffs. One team won, one team lost. They didn't care that day who won or lost. And I told them this two weeks ago. It breaks my heart that some of these kids aren't playing. Oh my God, they're missing opportunity. They're missing dreams. They're missing memories. Think about the kid that plays one sport. Oh, it fires me up. That's all they're going to do. Their whole, my God, play four sports, play five sports, go out for the play. Talk to a girl in the hallway, for gosh sakes. <laughs> Experience stuff. Experience. Why would you ever limit your experience when you're 12 years old, when you're 15 years old, when you're 17 years old? It breaks my heart. I'm pretty passionate about it, and I'm biased. But it's a shame that there are people in this picture, and it's our job as coaches and their teammates to find out why that is. And I know some of them have moved away, but I tell you what, they're missing out on something pretty special. And it's got nothing to do with winning and losing. Guaranteed. It'll be pretty special when we do tackle cancer again. It'll be a special night. <laughs> I've got a history of doing this. I need to sometimes step in and take over because Coach Sherwin does get pretty emotional. Hey, the last thing I want to do for you guys tonight before we, before we let you go is I've got, uh, I, I asked some parents. I went to uh, a group of parents and I asked them uh, to come in and, and record a message. Uh, we got a number of parents, plus we have one ex-student uh, who's now off and he's actually at the University of uh, Chicago Medical School right now. And uh, I asked them to record some things, and uh, Mr. Fornicoya helped us put this together. Uh, but I, I, and I think it's a great way to maybe end this, is let's go to the people um, who, who have went through this. So here are some uh, parents and kind of what they thought about our, our program. So I had three sons who participated in East, Eastview football, and I can't think of anything during that form of those formative high school years that really had a more positive impact on them. I think if you would ask him, he would say um, he learned humility, he learned determination, he learned hard work, uh, he learned selflessness, and those are all qualities that are going to benefit him down the road in his life. The other benefit was being able to manage time. Uh, you know, they couldn't play football all, you know, all day long. They had to balance that with their academic responsibilities as well as work commitments, um, particularly during the school year, which Dylan did in his, in his experience. So I think for me overall, it was very, very positive and, and definitely tangible benefits for the way I've just mentioned. If I asked AJ, you know, what, what, did, what did football do for you? And so he, wrote out a whole long list. I was really shocked at, at how much information that he provided, but he started off with, you know, it being a 11-man complete team game that you have to play as a team, all 11 players. So he talked about learning teamwork and, and working together and communication. At um, Athletically, uh, football provided him a reward for all the work that he had put forth um, in Supergroup and just really helped him physically develop throughout the, the year for other high school sports, including baseball. It really set, um, set him up for um, just being stronger and faster. The great thing about football is that you, you learn the skills of how to handle and face adversity. 
Um, because adversity happens all the time during the game. You're, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to mess up. But you have the options to you sit there and feel bad about it or you get back on the field and you work harder and you make up for it. And learning how to do that is applicable to so many other aspects in life. Whether you have a bad test score, you have to go back out there, work harder, study harder, and do better. Or let's say in med school, you're in the hospital and it's four in the morning and a patient needs you and you're tired and you have other things going on in your head, but you have to face that adversity and persevere through that. And football is a great way to teach you those skills very early on that you get to practice and that you really need in order to be successful in lots of phases in your life. In terms of the person he is, I think he would point to football as having one of the greatest impacts on his life. Um, and it really came from the coaches and from the particular Eastview High School program. I think the benefits that he gained most of all from the leadership that he uh, learned from football are going to benefit him down the road. Academically, football pushed Adam to really concentrate on his class work. He also um, talked about how much confidence that he's developed because of the things that he went through to be successful in football. I was actually pretty hesitant about uh, playing football. And I didn't start playing until my sophomore year of high school. And I'm so glad I did. Um, I learned that football really is the ultimate team game. And that's not the same with every other sport. You know, in some other sports, you can have one or two players who are really the, the main guys doing everything. But in football, it's completely different. Um, like at ECU football, everyone who wants to be on the team can make the team, and everyone has a role. Um, whether that's on the scout team, and you're giving the varsity guys a look for Friday night, they need you to work your hardest in order for them to be prepared for the game on Friday. And even if you are a varsity guy playing on Fridays, um, on any given play, you need to do your job. Uh, if you don't do your job, the play falls apart, it doesn't work. So. Football really teaches you to, to buy into the team mentality, and that's applicable uh, for the rest of your life. And I can tell even like in med school or group projects in classroom, uh, people who have this experience really buying into the team effort um, have a great advantage in working on teams and really getting things done that are bigger than themselves. They actually read a book as a team, Tony Dungy's book, Uncommon. And I was just floored by that. I remember telling lots and lots of parents from, from other places that my son was reading a book as part of his football program and going in to discuss the book um, as part of practice and nobody could believe it. All the books that they read as part of their uh, football curriculum, I guess I would say, um, all about leadership. And if you look at his bedroom wall up above his um, desk, he has snippets from all these books and he has things circled and he has them outlined and he sees them every day and I do think that has uh, become ingrained in him and part of who he is. Um, I remember one night after football when I had made him supper and um, at the end he, I got up to clear his dishes and he said, no mom, you sit there and I'm going to do the dishes tonight. You always do the dishes, I'm going to do the dishes. And, I mean, I have great kids, but that was a big surprise, and it was a change. And I just looked at him, and I was like, what's going on? And later that night, I picked up his the book that he was reading for football, and that was the chapter that he was reading. It was about sort of that respect for your parents, et cetera. And so those are the kinds of things that I saw from football. I think football and the ability to leverage football for uh, demonstrating you know, leadership as well as successful execution in whatever your position is on the field sets in motion a lot of these future dividends that may not be apparent at the start. I would say that the, the benefits of this program, and this program in particular, I, I just don't see it in any other sport that we participated in, that um, what they instill in these kids, they, they, they teach them to become good people, they're leaders, they're, they're, they're about the team, they're, they're um, it, I get emotional talking about it. Um, it's a good program, and uh, yeah, I've never participated in anything else quite like it. 
and I really respect the coaches for what they teach these boys. And, and they have become men, and I'm super proud of my son and of all of these boys um, that have participated. It's been a really good experience, and, and yes, again, there's, there is a risk of injury, but I don't see that as any more um, prevalent in football than I see it in any other sport. You guys, as, as we end here tonight, I just want to remind you, back on those tables, there are, there's a packet of readings, and uh, there's a number of articles that were in there that we feel pretty strongly about as coaches at Eastfield. There's also a green sheet, and the green sheet is uh, important dates that are coming up next. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can get involved in. There is a super group in the summer. Uh, there's how to register for football camp. Uh, if you've never played football before, give it a shot, right? I mean, we have camp, and you can come out and just kind of experience a little something going on at camp and see if you like it or not. Uh, we think it would, uh, it, it, it would benefit, I know, the, the football program itself to get more kids out there. We have a chance to work with you. Um, other than that, there are some things to be sold back there as well, uh, if you're looking to get some spirit work. If you have any questions, please talk to one of the coaches. There's a bunch of us around here. You can talk with us. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.